Hello all and welcome to Wow Crochet yet again for another tutorial. My name is Mary and in today's tutorial we are working on this gorgeous little dream catcher. Oh. <laughs> well it's actually part one of the dream catcher. We will be doing firstly the um, pattern to our circle then we'll be adding it to our ring itself. How gorgeous that's the back and that's the front. How gorgeous does it look? <laughs> I know I get all sing-songy don't I guys when I get happy um, you will need very minimal yarn because the dream catcher is quite small see it's the size of my hand and let me show you the measurements so you understand the measurement I have is 125 millimeters which is 12.5 centimeters so if you are working with a larger size just add an extra single crochet row if you are working with a smaller size if it's really small we can't do much about that <laughs> but if it's a tiny little bit smaller just take off the last single crochet row that we did okay you will need for your tutorial an eight ply cotton or a number three you will also need a size four millimeter hook okay you will need your scissors you will need your stitch marker you will need your darning needle to weave in two ends now yours truly naughty that I was I accidentally forgot to weave in that end before attaching it to the ring so I had a lot of trouble <laughs> trying to weave it in especially since I didn't leave a long enough tail and I got halfway through it and said guys head off on your own and do the rest <laughs> because I couldn't do it while I had the frame in front of me working all right but I did weave that in I got halfway through it and I said continue going through it a few times the last one we weaved in together which is there and I said don't stress if you see a kind of like a bubbled edge there because we are using that bubbled edge that'll be the middle of our um, dream catcher and we will be using that to put tassels on in our final part of the tutorial very exciting so when we add the tassels um, We'll also be adding things like leaves, possibly a little, I'm just thinking now, a little love heart, maybe even a, I don't know, a butterfly, a flower. I have not really decided, but look at that. Oh, gorgeous. I know, right? I know. I do like it a lot. <laughs> now, this is our smaller piece. We will be working on a larger piece next week, so the ring will be like huge. <laughs> and I will be discussing the size of that ring on this Wednesday's live at 4 p.m. Um, or if you miss out, I can always uh, talk about it again on Saturday mornings live at 10 a.m. This is uh, Melbourne, Australia time. All right, so thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoy making this little dream catcher. <laughs> and this is part one of the dream catcher. Good luck, guys. All righty, guys. Um, we have our thread. Get that ready. You will need for your ring size. Let's have a quick look. See at the ring size. You will need a 125 millimeter or a 12.5 centimeter or I have to look at this a 4.921 inch diameter for your uh, dream catcher ring if yours is a little bit big if it's um, 1500 which is 15 mil okay it doesn't matter that's fine if it's smaller this pattern's not going to work it must be this one and a slightly little bit bigger anything bigger if it's too big it's no good okay so I would go with the 125 or the 150 okay so you, you need a 15 centimeter or a 12.5 centimeter for this tutorial okay I hope that makes sense but we'll get rid of that paperwork we don't need it anymore we get rid of the ring we don't need that anymore not yet not yet we will <laughs> the cotton I'm using is Bendigo Woolen Mills 8 ply which was mentioned in the promo I will be using the four millimeter hook which is suited to the cotton you can use uh, a smaller hook if you use a larger hook this isn't going to work okay it's going to be too big for your ring all right so stick with the right hook size for your cotton preferably when I say an eight ply I mean a number three cotton if you go any higher it'll be far too thick for your um, dream catcher okay dream catchers just heads up um, does look better with thinner cotton and even so 
the um, eight ply, which is probably the number three, um, I think is still too thick for a dream catcher. Having said that, I've tried it and it does look nice. So there we go. Scissors, you will need. Sewing needle, I think you only need it for two or three ends at the end, which isn't much. You will definitely need your stitch marker for your um, crochet piece before we attach it to the ring. Okay, once it's on the ring, we don't need the stitch marker anymore. Well, we might, depending on whether you have trouble with it, but I don't think we will. Let's get on with the stitches. Now, for the stitches, you will need chains, single crochet, half double crochet, and double crochet, um, and a quick slip knot at the beginning, that's nothing. Um, these stitches can be found here on my uh, basic stitches um, tutorials. So what I'll do, I'll pop a link to these basic stitches in the description box down below if you want to have a play with those then come back to us and do the dream catcher otherwise I do make that section relatively easy for beginners so you don't even need to head off on your own and, and practice stitches you can actually just go ahead with this tutorial all right with a quick slip knot we are going to wrap our tail end around our finger once and twice yes holding it there and holding it at the back pass your back loop halfway over, hold it there, pass the other loop all the way over, pop your hook in and just give it a tug. All right, easy, easy, super easy that part. All right, now we are going to start off by chaining four. Don't make these chains too tight, okay? So chain one is a yarn over your hook, pull a loop through once, yarn over your hook twice, Yarn over your hook three times and the last one four. All right. Now we pop our hook in that very first stitch that we made. You could have two loops over or one, it doesn't matter. Now all you do is grab a loop and pull up a loop. Now what you need to do though is you need to really split that section right there. You need to have a little hole right there that you're going to crochet into in a minute. We're going to pull that loop through to the loop on your hook. Okay, make sure you've got that hole open. I nearly lost it. <laughs> Yarn over your hook and we're going to chain up four. One, two, three and four. Then we're going to put a double crochet in that center. Double crochet is a yarn over your hook. Pop your hook in the space right there that we just made. Pop your hook in that space, grab a loop and pull it through. You should have three loops on your hook. Yarn over your hook, pull through the first two loops. Yarn over your hook, pull through the last two loops. All right. So initially that will be classified as a double crochet chain one there. All right. And now we're doing a double crochet, which we've done chain one. And we're going to do that seven more times. So yarn over your hook, pop your hook in the space, pull up a loop, three loops on your hook, yarn over your hook, pull through the first two, yarn over your hook, pull through the last two, and then we're going to chain one. Now we do our second one, okay? It's actually the third, but second and counting the seven. Chain one. Let's do a third one. I will actually help count at the end for you anyway. Chain one and so on. Chain one. Chain one. chain one and we have last one in the space and don't forget to chain your one all right so if you wanted to count them you could count those little things there the little v's you see otherwise just count the posts which is one two three four five six seven eight nine you should have nine posts if you wanted to go ahead and count your chains you can um, I wouldn't as long as you've remembered that you've done chain one in between each stitch the pattern will not work if you do not put your chain one before each stitch okay okay now if you remembered correctly um, we did the chain three actually we did chain four and then we attached yes so what we want to do 
that stitch see that double crochet there that little V that you see belongs to that double crochet there'll be another V before it right there then there'll be a V before that which is your third chain that's where we want to get into okay so grab your hook you don't need any um, chain overs or anything you just need to pop your hook in that third chain making sure there's a chain in between this slip stitch and your double crochet so you pop your hook in there with two threads like so okay and you should have one thread underneath two threads on top now pull a loop through yes and pull it through again that is a slip stitch all right so then what you do is you slip stitch into the space that you've just made you made a space there by not slip stitching into that chain so what you've got to do is slip stitch into the space that's the whole space right there pop your hook in pull up a loop and pull it through to the loop on your hook giving it a gentle tug all right now you are going to chain up three one two and three in the same space we are putting one double crochet which is your yarn over your hook pop it in pull up your loop and you know how to do this because we've been doing them all along the row there and then a chain one so these chain threes will count as a double crochet in this round okay so we will now jump into the next space skipping a double crochet jump into that next space with two double crochets so that's one and two chain one jump into the next one and two that's all we're doing in this round we are jumping into every space with two double crochets chain one and two double crochets now I'm going to pick up speed a little bit now and off you go and do your stitches all right so here we are at the end of the row we have one more space right there we are going to put a double crochet I'm sorry two double crochets in the space right there and I'll show you later how to check to see if you've done it right chain one now we are going to attach it to that space again now this time we attach it to the very very last chain that you see or the very first chain that we made I'm sorry it was the last chain that we made All right there's your double crochet that stitch belongs to that and oh, of course mine is nice and tight <laughs> Okay, there we go. Oh, that was really tight, guys. <laughs> Don't do yours so tight. So you pull a loop through and pull it through to the loop on your hook. Just quickly pull up your loop. We're going to show you quickly how to count your sets. And you should have nine sets at the end of each round, starting from this one here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And you should have a chain before each set okay all right so you've slip stitch into that space there now you're going to slip stitch into your next double crochet right there then you're going to slip stitch right into that first space you see okay now you're chaining up one two and three don't make that too tight <laughs> saw what happens when it goes too tight <laughs> you put two double crochets in this space one and two yes chain one jump into your next space this time with three double crochets one two and three chain one jump into your next with three double crochets chain one so i think you get the picture with this round as well very simple three double crochets chain one easy all right so go ahead put your three double crochets chain one in each space you come to and i will meet you up 
at the end of the round, which is right there. Alrighty, here we are at the end of the round. I have one space left before we slip stitch. I'm going to put my two double crochets in there. One. I'm sorry, better make that three double crochets. <laughs> Wake up, Mary. <laughs> Alright, three double crochets. Chain one. Don't forget to chain one in between each. If you have not chained one, you need to go back and fix that. And now we do what we've been doing all along. We slip stitch to the top of that space right there. All right, so you've popped it through your two loops and your one. Pull a loop through and pull it through to the loop on your hook. Very basic. This is where you will need your stitch marker. You probably could have used your stitch marker on every round on that very top stitch. Might have helped with the uh, loosening of the stitch. But now you're just going to chain one single crochet. You just pop your hook in the space, pull a loop through, and you should have two loops on your hook. Yarn over your hook, pull through both loops on your hook without splitting it like I just did. <laughs> All right, grab your stitch marker and pop it through the two loops you see there, like the little V that you see. Pop it in there, and there you go. All right, in the same space, a little bit awkward now, you're going to do a half double crochet that's yarn over your hook, pop your hook in the same space, pull up your loop, you should have three loops on your hook, yarn over your hook, pull through all three loops on your hook, okay? In your next stitch, which is right there, that little V right there, the very first V you come to is your next stitch, you're going to put a double crochet, you know how to do those, you've done them before, okay? Easy? In your last stitch, you put a half double crochet, which is yarn over your hook, pop it in the, the stitch, pull up a loop, yarn over your hook, pull through all three loops on your hook, and then you do a single crochet in the same space. Pop your hook in, pull up a loop, two loops on your hook, yarn over your hook, pull through both loops on your hook. Now, when you get to the space, you are just putting a single crochet around the whole space. Pop your hook through the space, pull up a loop, two loops on your hook, yarn over your hook, pull through both loops, okay? In that first stitch you see right there, you're going to put a single crochet, and there is a stitch right there, okay? Single crochet, half double crochet, yarn over your hook, pop it in the space, pull up a loop, it's the same space, three loops on your hook, yarn over your hook, pull through all three loops on your hook, okay? Now we're going to do a double crochet in your middle space. And you know how to do a double crochet. Just normal. Then you're going to put a half double crochet in your next stitch. And a single crochet in the same space. Single crochet in your space. Right in there, right into the space, like that. All right, so what you're doing, you are putting sing, single crochet, half double in one. A double in the next, half double, single, there. Single, single, half double, double, half double, single, single. Single, half double, double, half double, single, single. All right? And that is what we're doing in the round. All right, so we are going to continue with our pattern with the single and the half double in the same space. Then the double in your middle space. I'm sorry, they're not spaces. They're actually stitches. <laughs> and then a half double in your next stitch and a single in the same stitch. Single in the space. Now that's your space. <laughs> Get it right, Mary. I'm doing well for a Monday morning. I truly am. <laughs> All right. Now a single in your first stitch. Half double in the same stitch. Double in your next stitch. And in your last stitch, you're putting a half double. Whoops and a single.
single in the space. Single in your next stitch. Half double in the same stitch. Double in your next stitch. Half double in your last stitch. Single in that last stitch. Then a single in the space. Single in your first stitch. Half double in the same stitch. Double in your next stitch. Half double in the last stitch. Single in that last stitch. And then a single in the space. And off you go. I'll still take my time for you so you can see. I'm almost at the end of the row as well. Single, single in the space. All right, not difficult. Just have to remember which stitch you're in and what you're doing in there. Double. Single. And single in the space. All right, now we are on our last cluster set. Single in your first stitch, half double in the same stitch, double in your middle stitch, half double in your last stitch, single in the same stitch, and you have a space before you slip stitch, so you need to put a single in that space. And there is your stitch marker right there, remember? We are going to pop our hook in the stitch marker. Take that marker out in the same space as the stitch marker, I should say. Take it out, pull a loop through, and pull it through to the loop on your hook. All right, chain one. So we are now going to pop a single crochet in that same space, pull up a loop, and you do your normal single crochet. Grab your stitch marker really important. Pop it through that stitch there. Single crochet in your next stitch. Single in your next and your next and so on and so forth all the way in the round. And it's in every V stitch that you come to. And the V stitches are those things right there. It's in every one of those two loops that you come to. Super easy. Well, this part is anyway. <laughs> so continue that in the round. Get to your last or your second last stitch and I shall meet you up. And that second last stitch or the last stitch is, let me show you. You've got your little V there, right there. You've got a V there. So any one of those two stitches there, get there and I shall meet you up. All right, I have my last two stitches to do. Let's get a nice close up for you. So there's your two stitches right there, one and two. So I'm gonna do that first one. And that's the last one right there. All right, now we are going to slip stitch into that ring there where your uh, stitch marker is pull a loop through and pull it through to the loop on your hook or oh, would have paid to take this off first sorry guys <laughs> it didn't it didn't do anything it just got in the way really all right chain one for one moment just pull up a loop all right because what i want to do is to show you the ring okay having a careful look at your ring 
you're thinking, oh, it's not big enough for it. But yes, it is. The the idea with dream catches is there, that's going to stretch and you want it to stretch. You need a good stretch. Now, let's go over here and check our millimetre thing again. It's 125 millimetre. If you have 150 millimetre, you need to do one more row of single crochet. If you have something smaller, even smaller, take undone that single crochet that we just did. All right, I'm hoping this is making sense for you. The next part, guys, is the fun part. If you have a larger one, go ahead, make your row of single crochet and meet us back here. In the meantime, the rest of us are going to get started. All right. Now, it's a little awkward to begin with this part, but you'll get it, trust me. Trust me, you will get it. It's just awkward, you know. And if your ring is as thick as mine, it's going to be even awkward. I hope it's not as thick as mine, because this is I tried it before and it was driving me batty. But anyway, <laughs> pop your hook in the same space that you did your slip stitch in. And now, before you pull your loop through, you pop your hook under your ring. And you grab the loop from behind the ring, pull it through and pull it through to the loop that you're in. So you, now you have two loops on your hook. It's like a normal single crochet, but it's around the ring. So you grab a loop and you pull it through both loops on your hook. Little bit awkward, but nothing you can't deal with, okay? Pop your hook in your next stitch around your ring, grab the loop, pull it through to the loop there you have two loops on your hook grab another loop from around the ring behind the ring and pull the loop through it is a normal single crochet it's just awkward pull that loop through oh, it's very awkward <laughs> all right so let's bring it close so you can see exactly where i'm popping my hook so the hook goes in your stitch right there to the back it pulls a loop through to the stitch two loops on your hook grab the loop from behind and pull it through the two loops and give it a tug all right so that's pretty much all we are doing in this round it is an awkward round and you're looking at it thinking oh there's no way this this is going to make it it's going to be far too tight well, see, that's what you need for your dream catcher. Your dream catcher needs to be tight. Okay, did I just, I've missed a stitch, haven't I? I split the yarn, that's all. Split the stitch. Deary me, here we go. Now I've got it under control. Naughty me. So it does get a little easier after a while. Okay, it's a little awkward, I know. But you know how they, in the old fashions, way they say beauty is pain <laughs> beauty is awkward <laughs> as well oh I don't know I'm making this stuff up as I go along sorry guys um, so keep going All right, the closer we get, it's a little bit awkward now. But it will work, trust me. Uh, what have we got? Two more to go. One. And two. Now that is a stitch right there, don't forget it. And that's a really tight stitch because it's close to the original there all right 
so that see how nice and taut that is and even still I would say that's not tight enough it should really be tight tight okay but it's not too bad I mean it's not going to come undone or anything now what you want to do because you want to oh, I'm sorry I should be showing you this you want to straighten out that line right there now you can see that we've done that loop there so what you want to do is actually get your hook in that loop if you can if you can and you want to pull a thread through <laughs> if you can because it's nice and tight now isn't it like so pull the loop through on the hook if you wanted to you could leave it like this but I don't want to they're saying what <laughs> no <laughs> yours truly wants to do another round so we're going to go through up and over one in up and over two and do that I'm not going to let you sit there and watch me do this <laughs> you're going to head off on your own and do this all the way and you have to do it in every stitch if you're going to do this round if you're not going to do this round that's fine it's not necessary the reason I like to do it for two reasons it makes it look prettier and the other reason it kind of gives it, it covers up all the well, most of the plastic anyway all right so go ahead and do your round get back to this little knotted area right here and I shall meet you up alrighty guys here we are at the end of the row now how I can tell it's the end of the row that's my last see that space is quite loose every all the other spaces are all filled up that one there still has a big gap there and that's our original stitch so what we're going to do is just pop the last one in okay and we are going to slip stitch on the top okay this time we're going to grab a slip stitch to the top that was quite easy actually quite quite easy pull a loop through pull up a loop and give your work a cut that is your um, ring formed oh how gorgeous does that look and see how nice it looks nice and tight if yours is kind of bubbly and loose it would have paid for you to have done one less row if it's extremely tight even better because they look gorgeous tight don't they alrighty so there you go we're gonna weave in a couple of ends now okay just turn it around and grab your first end this end probably should have been weaved in before we started the ring <laughs> I just forgot to do that and that'll teach me okay, there we go alrighty so yes it probably should have been weaved in before we did it on the ring before we crocheted it on the ring but hey <laughs> sorry <laughs> but actually it gives you an opportunity to tighten it up making sure you can't see your needle from the outside you can't Oh, sorry guys so far away all right so just keep going in and out of different areas yes in and out of different areas oh, I've left such a small tail too <laughs> okay guys what you could do is you could keep going one way hopefully your tail is bigger than mine um, and then go back the other way like that all right I'll fin finish the rest of that off air because it's far too small for you to see hopefully your tail's nice and long but if yours is like mine actually pop your hook I'm sorry try needle just pop your needle as far around as you want it to go yes making sure you can't see it there re-thread your needle now and then do it okay silly me left it I should not have um, cut it that small but there you go now re-thread your needle for your bottom thread a lot of people use this bottom thread um, to make tassels with they leave it and they add their tassels on it as well you can do that but I would rather just weave it in so what you do is you just pop it in a stitch next to it so find a stitch that's where we are at the moment find a stitch next to it and just pull it through that way and what that does is it actually tightens up your work as well as weaving it in so just find a space where you want to weave it into 
bit tight here guys so be prepared for that to be extra tight like mine was and going back different ways don't stress too much about this because we are going to add our tassels here so if that's noticeable and you accidentally let it come through don't stress the tassels will be over that and you won't see it when we decide to add our tassels which will be in a couple of days time I know right very exciting and that will be like the final part to this tutorial this is part one to the tutorial and part two will be done in a couple of days time that's plenty guys you don't need to do any more than that I've done it I think three times that's plenty I will weave that tiny little bit there off air later and there you go so that little bump you see right there where we just finished will have tassels attached to it all right I know a lot of people actually leave the bump turn it around and they add their um, chains here and then single crochet over the chains and they hold that's how they they hang theirs up but I'm going to use that part for the tassels all right, we're going to be putting tassels in there. We're going to be putting tassels all along here. You're going to love it. And we are going to add items that we are going to make. Possibly a little butterfly. Possibly a love heart. Possibly a um, um, num 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 leaves. I haven't really decided yet, guys. That's why I'm going to spend a couple of days making a few items. Join me again in a few days' time for us to add our gorgeous little items to our little dream catcher making it a complete dream catcher i mean look at that how gorgeous does it look i know sorry about the sing song i do get excited i do sing a lot when i get excited <laughs> all right but how it does look better nice and taut yes i would have probably done this even tighter all of that would have had massive gaps in there okay but that's fine too the way it is is perfect all right so thank you so much for watching guys don't forget to like subscribe and share and also don't forget to join us um, this Wednesday afternoon at 4 p.m. Melbourne Australia time uh, it is our live and we can discuss our uh, dream catcher and a couple of other projects that we're working on at the moment plus we can also discuss some of the items that we um, are putting on our dream catcher yay <laughs> so thanks so much for watching guys and guess what ciao for now <laughs>